Um, so first of all, let's do our quick introductions just to let you know who it is who's actually uh, running the session. So my name is Chris Robinson. I'm the founder and MD of a company called Boost Awards. We are an agency in our own right, uh, but a different type of agency. We just specialize in helping people enter and win awards. We've been around since 2006. We've written over 1,400 uh, winning entries uh, at about 40% win rate. Um, and over the years, and I also found, uh, hope, helped found uh, an institution called the Awards Trustmark, the Independent Awards Standards Council, which helps people, um, helps us police standards in the awards industry and check awards uh, meeting the necessary level of governance and independence. And sure enough, Don't Panic events are absolutely uh, up there and are accredited. All of their awards have been accredited by the programme. And I've been invited uh, to share what I've learned in the 14 years of doing this as a living with you in an hour. And I think I can get most of the salient points across uh, in that time. Adam, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, again, thanks for uh, bearing with us at the start. My name is Adam Whittles. I'm currently the head of SEO at Autotrader UK. Um, prior to joining Autotrader, um, I was uh, running the SEO program. Uh, at Apple for Europe, Middle East and Africa. And before moving to client side with Apple, I'd spent many years agency side from specialist digital marketing agencies to large uh, global uh, media organizations. Certainly a very well qualified judge and indicative of the sort of judges you're gonna get at these awards. And very experienced professional. So we're gonna be uh, talking together. I'm gonna to be leading and Adam's gonna be throwing in loads of contributions and taking a few of the slides. So you're gonna benefit from both sides of the table, someone who writes entries for a living and someone who is a, uh, who does a lot of judging, not for a living, just uh, <laughs> a lot of judging. Yeah. So I hate that. I've done a bit of judging myself, uh, but not, not these. Uh, there's 25 people at Boost and part of everyone's induction is to be an awards judge. It's something that I think is extremely valuable. Okay, right. The agenda today, we're going to give you some facts initially about the UK Agency Awards. Just enough, uh, it's, a, it's a bit of a hygiene factor. We want you to know about the awards scheme. It's some very important details, particularly dates. We are quite close to the official deadline. Uh, we're going to talk through a recipe. There are certain qualities that all entries should have, and it's one of those things that you've got to have them all, otherwise you're stuffed. So we're going to go through all of them. And lots of, and for each one of those vital e ingredients, we're going to give you some tips and tricks. Uh, some of these might be blindingly obvious. You are all agencies, so you are particularly good at communicating. Uh, but so, you know, bear with us if we point out some things that you might regard as obvious, but I'm hoping that you're going to pick up enough points uh, that you think are uh, worth bearing in mind, particularly maybe with planning and evidencing that you might not have considered uh, and, uh, and take them away with you. Okay, so let's look first of all at the facts. Let's just talk about the UK Agency Awards. Uh, you clearly familiar with them. That's why you're here today. That's why you're hoping to win one. It is but important points to pick up. It is UK only. There are a lot of award schemes that are international increasingly so these days, but this is entirely UK. It's open to every type of uh, marketing agency. So very broad. And the point to take away from that is that your judge, the person reading your entry, might not be familiar with your breed of marketing agency. They might be from PR and you might be talking about media. So be careful that you, you don't make any assumptions about their knowledge of, of your lingo and uh, what's considered best practice for you. Generally, uh, you'll find that the campaign categories will be judged by someone familiar with that sort of campaign, but a lot of the, uh, and the agencies, if it's like PR agency of the year, will be judged by someone familiar but it's uh, some of the more generalist categories that might not be the case. Uh, there are plenty of categories that we're gonna look at in a minute and just want to go through the dates first. So the first thing to bear in mind is that we have a pretty imminent deadline, the 5th of June. Um, it's likely that if you ask politely, you can get uh, an extension to that, but it won't be very long because judging day is the 8th of June. So we've got to do all the admin and the bringing together of content by then. The important things to bear in mind is, and to stick in your diary, when I talk about dates, it's not just a, it's a hygiene factor, there's tactics associated with this. So the, when the shortlist is an announced, um, accounted, sorry, there's a typo there. Um, when it's announced on the 10th of July, then uh, it's worth having that in the diary to make sure that you check up on that and do any necessary communications internally to boost morale 
and externally uh, to share with the fact that you are officially nominated for one of these prestigious awards and make sure you stick the, the date of the 17th of September in the diary. Hopefully it will be a physical event, if not it will be a digital event, um, but certainly worth putting it in your diary now and making sure it's blocked off for all those who want to mo monitor it. Worst comes to the worst, you can take it out of your diary, but it's certainly worth putting it in um, straight away. Uh, in terms of this process, you don't have to worry about a second stage. Everything is based on the written entry. So today's session is entirely about helping make sure that you do yourself justice and you earn full marks in the written entry. So it is a rational process. It is about earning marks, but it's also an emotional process as well. You want to wow the judge, get them to buy into it. Um, and the final point I want to talk about here is the categories. There are 35. Uh, yes, there are a lot of campaign awards as per yeah, numerous other marketing awards um, but this is the agency award so the lion's share of uh, the categories are for agencies uh, and as I was saying some are very specific uh, to do with like social media agency clearly any judge of that will be familiar with social media marketing but if you talk about ones like best agency culture or um, the uh, there's another one like experience or um, just general most impressive large agency growth, clearly that is not about a specific discipline. So you've got to make sure that you talk uh, language that any judge from any background, whether it's client side or agency side, will understand. Uh, just an important point with categories is it's, um, what you don't really want to do is just enter one category and put all your eggs in that basket. Uh, don't Panic have made it clear that they actively encourage you to go for multiple categories. I've known one company to go for nine categories. Uh, you can get multiple winners and it's absolutely plenty of precedence there. So it's good to hedge your bets, uh, pick an agency, maybe two agency categories and uh, a campaign category or two. Each will be judged on their own merit. Um, and each has a, it's a separate scoring system, but you're likely to get a different judging panel. It's unlikely the same judge will read um, your multiple entries. So each entry has to be written and aligned to that category, assuming the judge hasn't written, uh, read any others. Okay, and um, Adam will be uh, involved very soon. Sorry to, to keep him silent for now. Just um, We're now going to start looking at the actual entry process. And the first thing you need to know is what what an entry looks like. Uh, so we're going to talk about how to make your entry wow judges like Adam in a moment, but just the bare bones of it. Uh, you're required to supply a short summary. This is a summary that could be published so make it much more media friendly, typically written in the third person. You're going to have a thousand word main entry that you can include graphics in, um, but it tends to be mostly the text and cross-reference to um, uh, appendices, the graphics will be in the supporting material. Uh, and you can include some hyperlinks in the entry and uh, there is the option of including a supporting document which I would strongly recommend you do. So you can keep your entry quite tight but you can put a lot more graphs and diagrams, photographs, uh, testimonials, um, things that would swell your word count over the 1,000 word limit and increase the page count beyond the attention span of a judge, but give them content they can cross-reference. It's not mandatory that they pour through every single piece of content you supply in the URLs of the supporting documents, so you have to make that a lot more skimmable. The emphasis is on the 1,000 word entry. That's where most of the decision will be based. Okay. So that's the hygiene stuff. That's what you need to know, the bare bones of doing an entry. Now let's look at the qualities of an entry that make it a, a winner. Um, and before I carry on, Adam, is there anything you'd like to add about the actual process? You are, after all, on the other side of the table during it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's probably uh, worth just uh, giving a brief uh, summary of uh, the process from our end in terms of the judging. Um, you know, once you've obviously submitted an entry, um, you know, the judges will then um, get a selection of uh, entries that they have to pre-score. Um, so we'll obviously, we'll go through the, the scoring uh, sort of later in the in the presentation, but um, needless to say, there's a few sections that uh, we obviously score um, marks out of 10. Um, and then once uh, every judge has pre-scored, 
uh, they're then their scores are then aggregated uh, and then we come together uh, as a group to discuss uh, you know, the, the top entries within that. So once we've aggregated uh, all of the schools from all of the judges, uh, the judges then discuss uh, every entry. So, um, you know, there some entries that, that might necessarily get quite a high average score. Um, you know, that doesn't necessarily mean that they automatically win the award. They've discussed very much um, more to, to kind of get out of any uh, subjectivity from some of the scoring because obviously every judge is different every judge will have criteria that they're looking for um, in addition to the very uh, sort of broad criteria that we have to score um, so generally the, the discussions and the debates are a really good platform for the judges to to then really iron out the details of specific campaigns um, and it, it highlights sometimes things that uh, other judges might have uh, potentially missed within the uh, the pre-scoring so um, there's a very thorough process after you submit the entry um, that goes into to really the judging process Thank you. And we're going to get more on, on what, when they enter that judging process, uh, we're just in a moment going to look at what qualities are immediately apparent to a judge and what are they looking for and what wows them. Mm -hmm. So let's discuss that. So Adam, what do you think when you look at the entries, what are the things that stand out and make a, an entry a, a positive one, a good reading experience, one that's likely to win? What are the overarching qualities of a great entry? Yeah, I mean, I think there's a, it's a really good question. I think there's quite a few uh, key themes uh, that come out of um, entries that judges tend to like and those that they uh, tend to dislike. Um, I think one of the key things is, is really making it easy to read. Um, just consider that a judge uh, could be scoring upwards of 50 entries. Um, so making it easy to read through and get to the key points quickly is really appreciated by judges. Uh, Chris will actually talk through a few great tips related to this later in uh, in the webinar. Um, conversely, if an entry is really hard work getting through, uh, then of course uh, judges aren't going to like that. Um, yeah, there could be a number of reasons why uh, an entry might not necessarily be that easy to to read through, um, and I think we'll we'll touch upon a few of those uh, later. Um, another key theme really is, is about answering the questions fully. Um, you'd be surprised when, um, you know, for me to tell you that a lot of entries that we see, sometimes they just really don't answer the section. There's often a lot of waffle, um, you know, they don't really get to the point uh, and they're, they're often missing some really easy marks. Um, and it can be really frustrating for a judge when, um, you know, you see the time and effort that's gone into an entry award, but they just either haven't read the question or the section properly or the guidance each section has you know guidance and examples of what judges are looking for in there really paying attention to those and, and picking up those easy marks um, and, and especially because some of the easy marks tend to be at the beginning of an entry so it really can set the tone for an award entry if you know from the start they're not answering the questions it can really um, set a fairly negative tone for for the rest uh, of the entry. So I think those are two of the, the key points and I think we'll probably go through some more details uh, later in the webinar. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I, I'm very much uh, what, uh, pleased to hear that it, the content that we're covering is, is definitely aligned to what you're, uh, you're hearing Adam say. And uh, so let's look at your story. So it's possible that you have an okay story. You think this is a good campaign. It's a good, we're a great agency. Uh, you don't necessarily think you're a slam dunk winner, or it could be that you think you are unbeatable. You are the, the best of the best. You know, this, this is yours to lose. I, I haven't put in a column for we're rubbish or it's a rubbish story because clearly no one's going to enter the awards with a rubbish story. So let's look at the, the two possibilities of an OK story and an amazing story. And it's fairly clear that if you've got an amazing story uh, and it's well written and well presented and well evidenced, then you are a serious contender. It's also fairly apparent that a badly written or badly presented or badly evidenced OK story is a no hoper. So what I'd like you to draw your attention to is the smallest font on this page, which is the word and or or. To be a serious contender, you have to be well written and well presented and well evidenced. You need all three qualities. Whereas with the negative qualities of being badly written, badly presented, badly evidenced, there's an or. 
you have one of those negative qualities, you have put yourself out of the running. So it's those two situations are clear, but what might be a bit of a surprise is that you are far more likely to win as an okay story if you tick all those three boxes than an amazing story that just drops one of those three balls. So the purpose of this session and the top tips that myself and Adam are gonna give you is to take you from that bottom row of no hoper and long shot and move you to the top row of contender or serious contender. And that's what we're, we're going to do during this session. So let's talk you through some of those tips and tricks and uh, cover off them in order. So we're gonna start with writing tips. Now, the first thing with writing is not to write. Put your pen down, put away the keyboard, or, or maybe if you do have a pen and you want to do this pen and ink, just do a planning exercise. Because uh, what Adam was describing earlier in terms of a negative quality is that you just start wading through content and people are just on a content dump. They haven't necessarily read the questions or planned it. Uh, this is a simple process that I highly recommend with any entry. Now this works as well for a campaign category as it does for an agency category. What I'm considering first is this Y axis, bigness. It's not a real word, I made it up for this exercise, but what I'm talking about here is big picture. If you're high up the Y axis, you're in the big picture. You're talking about something that matters in terms of uh, maybe society or the marketplace. Uh, and low down is, is small picture, it's the minutiae. And then uh, the X axis is telling the story. It's starting with uh, the beginning and on the other side, it's the end of the story. And so this is how you plan your entry. The obvious thing to do is to talk at length and with exceptional detail about the design and the execution of your story. That's what you as an agency know best. Whether it's what we did as an agency to achieve growth or success or be the best in our sector, or what we did as a campaign to make it a, an awesome campaign, all the bells and whistles, then that is um, the, uh, the design part of the story. But that um, needs to be, if we'll talk about the scoring system later, but you need to talk about objectives and outcomes. As an agency, it's very easy to talk, particularly with campaigns, about your tactical objective. You know, your, if you're talking about SEO, the number of uh, visits to a website, or if you're talking about a PR campaign, the number of uh, you know, the advertising value equivalent. These are all tactical objectives. It's often where uh, a, a mediocre sort of non-finalist or finalist entry will be starting and finishing. But what we want you to do is elevate that, take it to a bigger picture, the strategic objectives. And this is either your business objectives, the things that matter in the boardroom of your agency, or the things that matter strategically to your clients, which are ultimately, uh, we're gonna talk about them later, but it could be to do with reputation, but it really it's about selling. Um, any marketing, the ultimate measure of success is a commercial measure of success. But there is another level. You can go to an even bigger picture. Um, I've seen some amazing stories over the years where you're talking about a need within society or something that was broken in the marketplace, something where you have been the industry leaders, you've done something brave, disruptive, and that you've achieved something on a much bigger scale. Those sorts of stories aren't just impactful. They're not just innovative. They are important. And that is a quality of, of a winning entry. But in terms of planning, you write the entry from left to right, but you plan the entry from top to bottom. And this is where it becomes a useful model, is you think, what is the, big, the highest purpose we can talk about for this campaign? What is it we are trying to achieve within the business, not necessarily just for the department, but within the business, within maybe the marketplace or the global enterprise? And can we say mission accomplished? Oh, we can, brilliant. Okay, well, let's move down a level. What are the departmental or the business objectives? The next level down, what were the objectives? Did we achieve mission accomplished? And objectives and outcomes are um, highly scored, as we will we'll show you shortly, uh, as well as the execution and strategy. So you've got to map this all out and balance. The scores are balanced between objectives, execution and results. And so your content needs to be, but it needs to be mirrored. You could spend, you know, at Boost, the average time spent writing an entry is about four and a half person days. You could be the same. And also, uh, bear in mind, you could write it just, you know everything, you've got all the stats, you could write it in a few hours. But the judge will probably read it in anywhere between five and 20 minutes. I mean, I talked to um, Adam earlier, he tends mm. to spend about 20 minutes 
<laughs> yes, yeah, sometimes. Uh, I mean, it, it does vary. Um, you know, obviously, we, we do sometimes get entries that, um, you know, are quicker and easier uh, to, to score. Um, but then there are those, um, you know, my, my view on it, and I mentioned this to Chris before, that, you know, obviously, you know, everyone is putting a lot of effort into um, creating these entries um, and really putting the time, um, you know, and thought behind them. Um, and from my perspective, you know, having worked agency side, I know the, the amount of effort that, that it can take. Um, you know, I like to, to give the same amount of um, time and attention to, to making sure I'm understanding the entry and, and really, you know, understanding any nuances or, um, you know, any challenges that, that they've had just to, to really give it the time uh, that it deserves. Obviously, some entries that clearly haven't put the time and attention or haven't attended webinars like this to get the tips and tricks, um, you know, those are a little quicker and easier to, to skim through. But, but yeah, that, that's my take on it. And thank you very much. Uh, right, so let's now, I'm going to turn to Adam because Adam uh, yeah. is the guy who is, might be the guy scoring your entry or one of the panel. Uh, so Adam, could you talk us through the scoring system that you would apply when doing that? Yeah, sure. So um, as you can see, each section is out of uh, 10. Um, yeah, for sort of nine to 10 marks, you would need uh, what we call outstanding or fully meets and even exceeds uh, the criteria um, an Im impressive score you get seven seven to eight so um, you know there, there are plenty of, of points available in the scoring um, and, and often what we find um, you know especially with um, you know the, the kind of the earlier sections the budget the objectives you know these really we, we view as fairly simple and easy marks to get um, and you'd be surprised how often um, you know, people fall up on, uh, you know, and entries fall up on these uh, particular sections because they're just not answering, uh, you know, the, the section fully, um, especially with objectives, uh, which is a strange one because most people that I speak to, um, you know, judges, um, you know, people entering awards, um, you know, they're familiar with the acronym SMART. Uh, you know, we talk about smart objectives constantly, you know, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, time bound. Pretty much everyone I speak to is familiar with that acronym and that concept. Yet when we see that the entries come in, the objectives tend to be things like, um, yeah, we want to increase brand awareness or uh, we want to become um, the best agency in the UK. You know, these are things that are just so vague and they, you know, it, it's easy to get the marks. So often, you know, we'll see, you know, bullet points in here, very specific, measurable, achievable, and very relevant uh, objectives. So, you know, that that's the kind of the one area where, you know, really it should be relatively easy marks to gain if you just follow uh, a simple concept that pretty much everyone is familiar with. Um, you know, and if it doesn't pass the SMART test, you're not going to get full marks. Um, likewise, you know, if you're entering the campaign category, um, you know, with the budgets, you know, sometimes we do get, um, you know, uh, entries that will say, oh, we can't state the budget and things like that. I would urge um, you know, entries to always, if they can, you know, be very transparent with, you know, budgets and objectives and as much of the detail as possible, because um, certainly from my perspective, you know, if you're saying that we can't put a budget down, then I, I can't give you the full marks um, for that. So, you know, get the permission that, that you need from the client or, um, you know, whatever you need to do to be able to, to be as transparent as possible. And, and also you should be aware that, you know, judges are held to very strict, um, you know, conditions and, and NDAs where, you know, we cannot talk about anything from the awards, whether it's, you know, letting slip, um, you know, who's won or have been nominated versus, um, you know, any specific details. So there's a high amount of integrity within the judges that should give you the confidence that actually we can be as transparent as we need to be with, uh, with the entries. Um, likewise, uh, other areas that, that kind of tend to be, um, you know, uh, confusing and, and, you know, drop marks is, is really in the sort of the strategy versus uh, implementation. Often we see entries that kind of confuse strategy with uh, the tactics and the implementation uh, that they put in. So, so really just, you know, try and look at the examples on the entry. Um, some of the tips that 
uh, Chris has been sharing today as well. Just make sure that you know you're uh, answering the questions uh, fully and and understanding what uh, you know the judges are, are looking for uh, within that. Uh, and just in terms of strategy, just on, on picking up on that point, that's one of the areas that people struggle with the most. It is. Uh, especially with 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 marketing is that people do often talk about their plan or their uh, issues really uh, as a good strategy answer has two elements it's it's the research you did um, you need to you can't have a strategy unless you you've made some strategic decisions and you can't make strategic decisions without the necessary research and then it's interested there a good strategy is basically just listing your strategic decisions and therefore the at high level what will then be discussed in the plan and the implementation so it's it's based on the old Kotler's SOSTAC um, uh, methodology about you know situation objective strategy uh, but in between objectives and strategy should be research uh, yeah, absolutely okay right let's look at some more tips uh, and uh, this is picking up on a lot of things you've heard Adam say and me say earlier but I'm just going to rattle through them I don't want to spend too long on these because a lot of these as you are great communicators because you all work for marketing agencies should be obvious but you know some of them might be a, uh, a new to you firstly which person do you talk in it's it's not it's not such an easy question to answer there is no right or wrong answer but from a judge's point of view if it reads like a, an article and it's written in the third person that can sound nice and objective and it, and it sometimes people are uncomfortable about boasting but there is no room for modesty in award entries my preference is if you are writing about your agency it should be in the voice of the the founder or the managing director or the ceo so it should be as an i it should be what we did what i did uh, and it's sometimes helpful to actually introduce who the narrator is at, at the beginning um, that's perfectly helpful if you're writing a campaign where it's a real partnership between your agency and the client using the first person can confuse things because you don't know who is talking whether it's the agency or the client so you either need to be very clear about who is the narrator of this story but maybe in in a situation where there there are two parties it's just safer to go for the third person but the main thing is is choose it and stick with it and make a conscious decision who is the storyteller here and stick with that one voice uh, and if you're doing a as i say later avoid copy paste if you're copying and pasting out proposals and press releases and case studies and articles and just jumbling it all together you're going to find that's one of the things that, that slips through the net as you will flit between first and third person uh, main tactic when you've done your planning is to write your headings first so you still haven't got into writing reams of text you lay out your headings and, and as Adam was saying people don't answer questions fully it happens all the time and to make sure you do you break down the questions and the judging criteria into headings you arrange the headings so that they tell a story and answer the question and earn the full marks you've got three things you've got to achieve tell a story answer the questions and fill marks so it's a bit of an exercise just to play with the headings until you achieve those three goals and only now you planned your headings you've got a handle on your story the v-shape that i talked to you about now you're ready to start telling your story and this is where it's good to turn your phone off turn off email and just try and tell the story from start to finish you've done your research it should be clear in your head do one pass through it not necessarily fleshing it all out you might put in little markers which says insert a piece of research here in insert a bullet point the main work streams here put them in little brackets the main thing here is to do the narrative bit in one pass so that the storytelling element is consistent throughout and is has the same energy the same passion throughout and that's the next point is don't talk in management speak or this weird concept of award speakers like you're talking to judges in a court of law you're not these are people like adam you can look at him he's a he's a fun real <laughs> guy and he wants as he said at the beginning to hear a story something told of energy and passion and exuberance yeah. not management speak um and if you tell him something then tell him why it's amazing it's not up to adam to know everything about the best practice in every type of agency in every country in every county every whether what you're doing is amazing it's not up to him to know whether you uh, overcame 
uh, unprecedented technological hurdles or, or this your culture is exceptional within this city or within this agency you have to tell adam uh, and any judge you have to spell out why it's exceptional and ideally back it up with evidence as well yeah uh, that's a really good uh, point, actually, Chris. And sorry to to jump in, no, no, but um, you know, in, in terms of you know going back to um, you know some of the criteria that we mark, one of the key sections, which is right at the end, I believe, of the um, the agency awards, is that question: why we should win. Um, and I think you know often you know that is a very weak uh, section when I've seen uh, entries in that category before because. You know, the amount of times I've seen, oh, uh, we think we should win because it would mean a lot to us. Um, you know, it, it just really doesn't, um, you know, it's not convincing. It doesn't really tell the story exactly as, as Chris just mentioned, you know, um, really explain why, you know, you think you should win an, an agency award because just, you know, to every entry, it would mean the world to them to to win the award. So you've really got to differentiate and explain exactly what it is you've done, what you've achieved, and why you should win for that. Yeah, and although you can't get Adam to to read your entry at the end and tell you whether it it, it, it meets the, the standard required, it's very helpful to just get someone else to read it. So I, I would encourage you to to give it to a colleague or, or even a family member, and the most brutal thing that they can do is read it out loud back at you it's it's a very cruel exercise but it's i guarantee you will rewrite it afterwards especially if that person isn't particularly familiar with your sector now i'm talking about presentation tips next now i talked about the three qualities well written well pres presented and well evidenced now presentation here doesn't mean you stand up there is no dragon's den stage about a tenth of the awards out there do have a face-to-face -face stage and don't panic awards are not one of them very rare in marketing awards to, to do this it's particularly pop popular in hr awards and customer service awards but not so popular here so it's quite normal to just rely on the written entry so what do we mean when we say presentation in terms of the written entry well there's some certain qualities here that i would like to pick up on you do need illustration and with a supporting document and the urls you are allowed to use graphics and it's, it's welcome to put a montage of photos or your your media elements or your creatives should appear in a nice supporting document um, but and it should be professionally presented it doesn't necessarily mean that it has to look fantastic uh, I'm going to give you a couple of examples in a moment uh, another key message is the balance of bullets and narrative uh, Adam and other judges when they open up an entry and it is a wall of text you can probably guess their reaction. You know, they're, they're on as I'm saying, their 20th entry, maybe their third glass of wine, and, and they open up uh, and they're questioning why they volunteered to do this. And they open up an entry and it is just a slab of text. You can guess their reaction. It's a sort of, really? And so your job is to give them something that doesn't create that reaction, but in, in, instead gets them in engaged. And often by laying it out in a readable, skimmable way with good headings and a, and a balance between bullets and narrative, the appropriate number of images with clear captions, um, using graphs and diagrams well, but not just bomb, you know, you've done a search campaign and you've got 30 graphs that you can share. So don't just chuck them pick the best ones for the main entry, put a few others in the supporting document. Uh, use your diagrams and images sparingly, but effectively caption them, make them clear, make the, maybe annotate them. Um, make sure that the judge can skim through it and using headings and captions and maybe bold or capital letters, make sure the judge can skim your entry. You know, Adam will spend 20 minutes reading your entry, but another yeah. judge might spend five. They, if they don't get a paragraph, they're not going to reread it. So make sure they get it first time. So Adam, what, what yeah, I was just going to add uh, one thing that uh, I saw recently with with an entry which I, I actually quite liked. Now, um, bear in mind it's uh, subjective to uh, to my reading of it, but um, yeah, they they even use the technique of just using a different color font. Um, mm. You know, using a different color font when you look at you know we get sort of a full 
sort of raw copy of the the entry with all the sort of initial pages and then you get to the the award entry with with all the the headings and sections you know just um you know highlighting the areas that you've put in in, in a red font um actually made it incredibly easier for me to read through because mm -hmm. i could clearly see and jump to you know the sections that that were referencing what i needed to look at um you know something like that is you know can be really really powerful just to to make it easier to read yeah um, and that's a very good point uh the use of red font as well is sometimes uh if you've got an, a confidentiality issue adam talked about it earlier saying oh we're not allowed to mention this sometimes it reassures the end client that if you do it uh, you put a a footer in it which says anything in say red font or blue font is strictly confidential judges eyes only just you can reinforce the fact that this must not go outside the judging sphere um, and, and sometimes people use red font like that but I do agree I've seen sort of bold with a bit of blue or something just just to make sure I mean we did a panel discussion once with a bunch of, I think about 10 people who were prospective entrants but we got them to do some judging and there would be a score story they were judging had an ROI figure but almost all of them missed it because it came in the start of a paragraph after a graphic and their brain hadn't settled down after a graphic. Almost all of them missed the ROI and said this entry didn't have an ROI, but it was there, but it wasn't bold. It was just written in the narrative straight after something really eye-catching. So there's a lot of psychology to presentation and it's not necessarily about making it look like an advert, like a piece of marketing collateral. But let's talk, let's give you some examples there. So, Right, here on the screen, is a, it's a rare situation, it's not for a marketing or, or a UK agency award, but it's a very rare situation that happened uh, many years ago, but I stored it and I put it in low res so you can't see the confidential information. Top, well, <laughs> the, well, the top entry was submitted, it didn't get shortlisted. The bottom entry was submitted to the same category of the same award. It was the same story in the same category of the same award the following year and won. So it's 90% the same stuff. It was a few sort of technical changes, but essentially the same story won and previous year didn't even shortlist. And a big part of that was the fact that it was, you can see the difference. You get the wall of text approach, the judge clearly didn't see the merit of it, but then it's just laid out. And as you can see, it's not graphic designed to, to the nth degree. It is just well presented. You use tables, graphs, clearly picked photographs, captions to draw things out, lots of headings and bullet points. And it's, it was almost entirely down to presentation. And, I, and just to reinforce, it doesn't have to be graphic designed. But with marketing awards, there is often an appetite for good graphic design. So your supporting document, uh, or if in certain awards, you can get away with doing this. Um, but this is a sort of an extreme example. This won uh, a marketing award, uh, and this is, a, it's just what happens when you choose to go the extra mile with your graphic design. This is a great looking entry, and yeah, most judges wouldn't, some awards you might get extra marks for it, um, but with these awards, there's no marks for graphic design. But it does help get your point across. And as you can see, there's only one killer graph at the end, but it's very clearly annotated. There's a mm. montage of different creatives. Uh, it's only a thousand words, which is about the same here. Uh, but it's, it's just laid out in a nice, clear way. Yeah. So that's taking it to an extreme. The bottom one here is all you need to do. But here's what you can choose to do. It's not manda mandatory, but that's what, uh, what I would say uh, a, a top notch um, entry looks like and uh, yeah it's a great example actually that Chris shares because what it illustrates as well is that you know it's not always enough just to have a great story or a great idea um, you know you can believe it's the most innovative campaign and you know the most groundbreaking campaign but you know if it's not written well if it's not presented well if it's not evidenced well um, and by evidence we also mean you know shows that there's been some impact in in results then you know it's it's not going to win um, and often that's when uh, you know you'll get um, comments uh, people asking why didn't it win because it's a great campaign a great idea and whilst yes it may be but you know what was the entry like um, did it have results that were evidenced well in the entry? Um, so yeah, it's a great example that Chris shows there. 
Thank you. Right, the final, the third and final quality of um, a, a great award entry that might be considered a winner is evidencing. And this is where marketing awards in general are outstanding. If, uh, you know, when I talk to people about HR awards, I will often refer to marketing awards and say, you know, you've got to be as good as marketing awards because they're generally great at this and they can even do things like econometric modeling. It, so it, you, the standard is exceptionally high. The bar is high. So it's not necessarily with an HR or training or customer service or corporate social responsibility award, you might win with evidence by out evidencing the competition with marketing. It's a rite of passage. Uh, you have to have strong evidence. But what the judges are often wowed by is the something that they read and, and they're going, wow. And even if they don't realize that they're doing it, they accidentally mouth the word wow while they're reading your entry and then you're on a good foot. But evidence is absolutely necessary. It's one of these things, if you get it wrong, you're out of the running. When I say evidence, this is what I mean evidence of. Now, uh, let's touch on the grey one first. If you're going to make a statement about this being groundbreaking, innovative, exceptional, unique, if you make a statement like that, you have to evidence it. it you can't just say this was a, a, an innovative campaign. You have to say it was the first, it was the only. You have a clear statement of uniqueness. Um, and qualify. You could have to just say we believe or you could say we've done loads of desk research. There's lots of tactics here. Um, now let's look at what the obvious thing when you talk about evidence is evidence of results. So you get your app tactical objectives met. So you wanted to, uh, your PR campaign, you wanted a certain amount of media coverage or it was an advertising campaign, you wanted a certain number of visits to a landing page or, or some uh, uh, portal. Uh, uh, maybe it, it was a search campaign and, and it, the tactical campaigns were all about clicks and, and maybe transactions. Uh, but that's not going to win you. You need to then elevate it, as I said early in your planning, to the strategic objective. So now I'm going to qualify and drill into a bit more detail about the strategic objectives and strategic objectives met. Now Adam said earlier that often uh, objectives need to be smart to earn full marks. I'm going to throw in another piece of management jargon, I'm afraid, balanced. You might have heard of a balanced scorecard by Norton and Kaplan. There are various other principles, but results shouldn't be all about money to be really good. It, you can't make, um, if you read Bain and Co's uh, book about the ultimate question, uh, it's not just about bad profit, making as much money at the expense of happy customers or happy staff. A really good results section should be balanced. So your strategic objectives met fall into these four camps that are particularly pertinent to marketing. You can have reputational impacts. Uh, so yes, you could have media coverage, but how did that affect the reputation? There, there are various league tables there and, and various ways or, or research, Gartner, Forrester Research, something which shows, yes, their reputation has improved. Cultural benefits. Now, a marketing campaign, really good marketing campaigns often look at the internal marketing dimension so that it had an impact on morale and, and employees became brand advocates and, and phrases like that. And you, you can evidence that because the marketing was so good, so was the impact. And there is a category for best culture in an agency. So, but all agencies, all agency applications need to prove that there is a good cultural dimension. Equally, the biggest burden of proof in an agency of the year category isn't that you've got a great culture and it's not that you're making tons of money. It's actually that you have happy customers. If you don't have a customer survey, I'd strongly recommend you do one. You haven't got long to do one. Um, we've got some templates if you need to knock one out quickly. Um, but it, it's vital that you quantify just how happy your customers are and not just surveying your happy customers. It has to be a representative sample of all those who've had a transaction in the last year uh, and follow certain methodology. Um, and then yes, any campaign or any agency of the year has to have a financial dimension. It could be that as a campaign, you delivered a ROI make sure you calculate it correctly, ideally using the IPA ROMI model, uh, or that your agency is delivering growth and profitable growth. It's not enough to just make the same profit on the top of higher turnover, it needs to be profitable growth as well. So there's definitely a financial dimension, but it has to be balanced by other softer measures. Reputation could, we sometimes call this a CRs, uh, four Cs, so not just Cs and Rs. Uh, it could be that you go customer, cult, um, CSR, Corporate Social Responsibility, Culture, Customers and Cash. 
but I've, I've changed it for the purpose of this presentation. But reputation can be because you're doing something ethical. So if there's some sustainable, cultural, social dimension to your entry, that's very good as well. Okay, but in every single one, you need to back it up with some statistics. But if your agency of a year um, submission concludes with his evidence of a great reputation, his evidence of a great culture, his evidence of happy customers and loyal customers, and his evidence of great financial campaign performance and business performance. You've got a balanced mm. results. And if you've got balanced results, if you've done the planning exercise, your objectives at the, the beginning need to uh, be symmetrical, reflective of those results. Okay. Adam, anything to add there? Um, I think you covered it brilliantly there, uh, Chris. And, you know, just to, to emphasize that, you know, with the evidence, you know, bear in mind that, you know, judges are pretty savvy. We like to think we are. Um, and, you know, the, the evidence should be verifiable, um, you know, because uh, you, you need to consider that judges are going to check what evidence that you, you put in, you know, so if you make a statement that, you know, we, um, you know, increased uh, traffic or increased our reputation uh, awareness or brand awareness, um, you know, judges are going to check those. So, um, you know, you should make sure that you know, any results or evidence that you put in can be backed up and, um, you know, can be verified as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, some people even put a phone number next to a testimonial. Not that the judge is ever going to ring them up, but it just sort of says, yeah. Some do. Some, feel, feel believe free. it or not. Yeah, there's uh, some judges I know uh, will do that. So if you put, um, you know, customer references down, I do know judges that will ring up those customers to say, oh, was this, um, you know, campaign, were you happy and the results? Yeah. There, there, there are some that will will do that. Um, if I saw, I've not seen that myself but if i did see that then uh, i probably would uh, as well because um especially in in marketing um yeah with uh, marketers as well and a lot of the judges have marketing backgrounds we are quite inquisitive and and mm. you know we do like to um you know facts check as well it's quite a big uh, theme so um you know if you do put something in there just be aware that judges could actually check uh the facts and, and the evidence. Yeah, good point. Right, uh, so just, I'm conscious of time, uh, so I'm just gonna rattle through this and then we're gonna turn to some questions to so make sure that you share any questions you've got in the chat area. Um, but just in terms of evidence, don't forget my planning slide earlier, look at the bigger picture. If it matters to a business, the chances are it's measured, trying to convince the judge that you can take credit for these big picture measures can be a challenge in its own right cause and effect um, but don't forget to do that as well uh, trying to paint a picture at the beginning in the objective section to say quantify the problem so that you make the results at the end seem even more impressive to you know you could say i went mountain climbing but to describe the mountain that you climbed don't forget to do that Data does tend to exist around businesses. Um, if you talk to the end client of a campaign or you route around an agency for an agency entry, there are a lot of things that are being measured that you could use. So don't think you have to start from scratch. What we do tend to find the thing that is missing is customer surveys. Don't forget to do a customer survey. Um, ROI, I mentioned earlier, the Institute of Practices and Advertisers has a very rigid model for ROMI. If you use that, then you can use the phrase ROMI and judges will be impressed. If not, uh, use phrasing like for every one pound spent on this campaign, 10 pounds will return to the bottom line. So it's absolutely clear what you mean, because just saying we had a 200% ROI, there are loads of different ways to achieve that. So if you do a statement like that, at least appendix your uh, maths. Um, also, if you, get, if you put in maths and statistics, don't forget that sometimes humanity is needed as well, especially for an agency entry. So put in examples and testimonials and case studies just to, to give the qualitative side of your evidence as well as quantitative. Also, and Adam talks about making uh, statistics relevant. So have a comparison. So industry benchmarks is great if you can get them. Year on year is good. Currently in the climate, year on year isn't brilliant. So find something else to compare. But, you know, the obvious one, um, and I'd love to get you to all put your hands up here and see if you remembered it, but it, what is the comparator to your results? 
I can't get you to put your hands up, but the correct answer is objectives. What matters is not how it compares necessarily year on year, but how it compares to your objectives. So that's the, the most important comparison in your results section. Right, uh, for the remaining time, we've got just under five minutes. You're welcome to stay on. I'm not in a rush to go anywhere, but uh, you might have just ring fenced an hour in your diary is to, to go through questions. And before we've written a few questions here, uh, feel free to pose them. Uh, but are there any uh, questions on the, on the chat that uh, you'd like to share? And if we don't have any from you, we're gonna go through our pre-existing list. Uh, I think you're on mute, is it Jessica? Gemma, can you, uh, we, we currently don't have any questions. Okay, all right, well let's no start, dive into our, our standard ones. Um, so, and, and if you could stay off mute because we might want you to, to chip in with these as well. Uh, can we use graphics? Uh, so many award entries, and, and Adam, you've probably seen this, are just, mm. they, they don't seize the opportunity. So I've mentioned you can use graphics, and do, please, put in graphs. It's not a press release, so don't, don't miss that opportunity. Yeah, definitely. Um, and, and Gemma, the, the word count, uh, how strict is that? I think it's about 10%, isn't it? On the 1,000 words, you can get away with 1,100 words, isn't it? It is, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I would, I would definitely, just as a, uh, from a judge's perspective as well, just um, err on the side of caution. Uh, some judges are, f can be flexible with, with word counts um, and, and don't necessarily pay too much attention to them others are very much sticklers for word counts and yeah. will penalize mm -hmm. um quite harshly if they go over um the word word counts um for me i i, I tend to take a, a balanced approach to it i won't necessarily be counting the words but i can tell uh, if an entry is certainly well over the word count and will potentially mark negatively um for that as well so mm -hmm. definitely try and um, be as concise as, as possible. And uh, if you think you can fudge the system by embedding loads of words in an image, then that is just because Microsoft Word doesn't see them as words, <laughs> the judges do, so, so don't, don't think that it's all about what Microsoft Word counts. Definitely. Um, and uh, there's no face-to-face -face presentation, just to be clear on that one. It, um, and in terms of cost to enter, Gemma, do you want to talk through that and the, the buy five get the sixth free offer yeah of course so what, what <laughs> so at the moment we're offering five if you enter five categories you'll get one entry free which is um the greatest offer that we've offered so far <laughs> okay and uh the, what uh sorry i slipped my mind what's the fee per entry it's 155 which is very on the low side, I'd say from all the awards out there, if you go for one of the Guardian awards, it's like 800 pounds and, and a lot of American awards are 500 bucks. So it's, it's a very, very cost effective scheme. Um, do you get feedback? This is something they're looking into, um, but if you want feedback, ask for it. Uh, it with the people that don't panic, as I understand, are trying to automate it, but it's quite an onerous process, but it's definitely available should you ask it. Yeah, we do as judges when we do the pre-scoring. Um, we write a lot of notes um, mm. for each award. Um, so, uh, yeah, there, there is the possibility to, to get that feedback. But, um, yeah, we, we definitely do um, make notes as well. So, yeah, so it's a lot to go through. And, and at the moment, it's not automated. But, yeah, it, it's, uh, it's there. Uh, and does it have to be a recent one? Well, yes, your story should ideally um, conclude in the since the last awards program otherwise the judges will think why didn't you enter it last year um, but by the conclusion it could be your evaluation you actually did your um, number crunching exercise for a campaign in the last six 12 months and so you can make it clear this is why you're entering it this year with an agency you need to have some kind of story which makes it clear this is the year it's an agency of the year this is why we should win this year as opposed to last year or next year so there does need to be a, a, a certain recency to it. Um, and in terms of entering multiple categories, yes, you absolutely can, and it's encouraged to do so. But if you're going to repurpose an agency entry into best culture and best growth, clearly, you, for example, best in your sphere, 
uh, you need to tailor it to suit the given category. If it looks like it was written for another category, that's just going to jar with the reader. Mm. And in terms of judging the entry, it's people like Adam. I mean, Adam, you've met other judges, and, and Gemma, do you want to talk about the profile of other people who might be judging the entries? So, the UK Agency Awards this year, we've got um, a vast array of brands across the UK that are now judging. Um, I think we've got 20 judges so far confirmed. Mostly from client side, then. Mm -hmm. Which makes no. it easy to improve. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you normally get a mixture of the two, which is absolutely fine, but it's great when you get senior people like Adam from, from brands who are, are judging a category that they're familiar with as clients. It makes your, um, you know, you're going to be scrutinized. It's true. Yep. <laughs> and uh, almost, well, despite a slightly late start, we're fa finishing fairly uh, on time. So are there any other questions before we wrap up for the day? We've had no more questions in. No more questions, which is fine. I hope that means that we've answered all your questions <laughs> and given you food for thought. And the one thing that remains to say is good luck. Blow their socks off, kick ass. And uh, I hope you find that what we've covered today um, has uh, gives you a new perspective on writing your award entry, makes you very thorough and more likely to win. And thank you very much for joining us at this webinar. Thank yeah, you. Thanks, everyone.